everybody. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. And today we are continuing on uh, what we started last week with the Sunday devotionals. Uh, while all of us or most of us are without church, <laughs> uh, that's something that I wanted to do to be able to give some spiritual nourishment to myself and also to my friends. And I thought it would be a cool opportunity to talk with people of all different Christian faiths uh, and have a, just a cool experience, uh, take uh, advantage of this really strange time that we're in. And so I am I'm Rachel Wagner, and I have a very good friend uh, here with me. Chris from Durbania is here. And yeah. thanks so much for coming on yes. and doing this. Thank you for inviting me. This is such a cool thing that you're doing. So thank you so much for inviting me to be part of it. Now, are you, are you sans church at the moment? I mean, I, I guess everything is closed in California. Everything is closed. Yeah, I, th <laughs> just this week, I edited our entire service together. We filmed it Thursday, like right before all the shelter in place stuff really got enforced. And so we recorded everything. I edited the whole service. And in fact, as we're recording this, it's streaming. So it's oh, kind of nice. cool. Well, yeah. if you give me the link, I'll be happy to put it in the yeah, I could definitely, I could yeah. definitely send you that link, and we got a couple more times. It's gonna, uh, you know, do services today too. So yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so last week we talked about kindness, and uh, this week I uh, we decided to talk about courage. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my uh, talk, and then uh, we will, we'll, uh, and then uh, Chris and I will talk about. Uh, what he has prepared and just discuss it in general and we'd love to get your comments and thoughts and uh, just make this a really cool experience so here we go all right okay Winston Churchill once said fear is a reaction courage is a decision over the last week I've seen a lot of memes that say something to the effect of past generations had to go to uh, to war we are asked to sit on the couch and watch tv I get the point behind these statements, but I think they uh, undersell the challenges many of us are facing. This is a time of great fear and anxiety uh, for a lot of reasons, and great courage and strength is required for all of us to push on through stronger and be stronger than ever before. Some of the fears we are facing include a fear of getting sick, a fear of loved ones getting sick, uh, a fear of economic insecurity, of losing your job, or what will happen now that you have lost your job, uh, a fear of emotional instability and trauma, a fear of having to homeschool your children and help them deal with this anxious time, uh, a fear of what the world will be like after this is done, will life be the same and what will those changes mean, a fear of the effects of isolation and loneliness, and many, many other fears. I'm sure many of you could add to this list. And so what do we do with these fears and how can we overcome them? Uh, how do we, in the words of Churchill, make the decision to have courage? Let's turn to the Old Testament for the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is in Daniel 3. The story goes of three men who were working in the nation of Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. One day, the king proclaims a decree that all must bow down to a golden idol. The three men refuse and as punishment, they're forced to be thrown into a fiery furnace heated seven times hotter than normal. Indeed, it was so hot that, the, that it slew the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace. But guess what happened? King Nebuchadnezzar looks into the furnace and says, did we not cast three men into, bound into the furnace? Lo, I see four men. Uh, then Nebuchadnezzar called them out of the fire, and not one hair on their bodies or clothing was singed. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. My favorite thing about this story is when confronted with the idea of worshiping the idol and near certain death, the three men did not respond with fear, nor did they promise that they would be saved by a miracle. They said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But, and here is the key, but if not, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast cast up. This is true courage. 
to believe God can save you from tough times. But if not, I will keep the faith and keep on going. As we are asked to go through this challenging experience, we may wonder why God is not stepping in to save us. But hopefully we can have the courage of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and say, but if not, I will trust in the Lord and push on through. Uh, so this is my prayer for all of us. And uh, so, so amen th to that. <laughs> yes, Thank you. amen. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> what were you, what, were you, what have been your thoughts uh, about courage and about some of the things maybe that I said? Uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, and I love the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And, and your point about the fact that they chose courage, like Winston, Winston Churchill, they could have reacted in fear, but they chose courage. And the way they chose courage was they knew God could deliver them from the fire. Mm -hmm. And they knew they were in God's will because they weren't bowing down to other gods. Yeah. And so they had full confidence in God's ability to deliver. But I love what you said. Such was their heart that even if they weren't delivered, they were going to serve God no matter what. Yeah. I really so, like that, that, but if not, like we can, yeah. we can, that's to me is like true faith that yep. yeah, I believe that, that God has all power and God can save us. But if not, I will still believe. Yep. And, and while you were reading that last part, I was thinking, I, I think it's in John chapter 16. I could be wrong. I can't exactly remember where the passage is, but, but Jesus said in the world, you will have trouble. And I just feel like that's Jesus being honest. We're born into this world. It's fallen. It's got coronavirus. It's got many other trials and tribulations. But then Jesus continued on and said, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So it, it's difficult because in the world, we're not going to escape trouble. Yeah. But we have God with us like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. And he was in the fire with them. And instead yeah. of three men, it was four. It was, yeah. That's the other thing too, is, is that he didn't stop them from being thrown into the furnace. He didn't, he didn't, he, but he was there beside them the whole time. And, yes. and you think about it's the same way. I was, I was almost going to use Daniel in the lion's den, but you don't get quite as good of, there's really no, no sort of dialogue from Daniel yes. uh, in that story. Uh, but he's he still had to go into that pit he still yeah. had to experience that and uh, and i think that uh you know there are times when of course the the uh the the, the trial is kind of taken from people uh and there are miracles in that way but uh oft, more often than not you are forced to go into the pit you're forced to go into the fire and then he's there with you through it yes yeah cuz i mean even Jesus's prayer when he was in the garden right before he was crucified, yeah. he didn't pray that we get taken out of the world. He, he prayed for us to have that courage in the world, that yeah. we would abide in him in the world, and then he would be in us in the world mm -hmm. so we could be lights of the world. So when I look at uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in a sense, because they were thrown into that fire, they became a light to the king because the king saw that fourth figure who was one like the son of man. Yeah. And yeah. so they got to be a light to him. And so we're going through this fiery trial of coronavirus right now. And I just feel like this isn't the time for us to shrink back in fear. It's the time for us to step forward and courage and be a light in this dark time. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true when you think about it, because that's what made uh, Christ's sacrifice so universal is that yeah. he's the only one that uh, was not it was was forced to be truly alone for his final sacrifice and oh, he yeah. says uh, i mean he did get god's angel in the garden but but it, he had to that was the final kind of blow is that god had to in order for him to for his sacrifice to be to 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 be something that that sacrificed for everybody that yeah. uh, you know and he said uh, he even he said uh that thy will be done, you know? So uh, yeah. even he had a kind of a, but if not kind of moment. Yeah. Yeah, he did. But not my will, your will be done. Very yeah. powerful moment. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it, cause it, I, I didn't, I, I saw that meme a lot this, this last week of, Hey, all we're being asked to do is sit and watch TV. And I really, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I think that, uh, that yes, we're not asked to, well, not all of us are asked to go into war and to fight, but I think just because some people had a different challenge doesn't mean what we're experiencing isn't challenge. Yes. Yeah, no, it, it, it is a challenge. And it's funny because it's, it's insane how much of a mental challenge it is too. Yeah. Like for a lot of us who don't have coronavirus, who probably aren't going to get coronavirus, there's still this huge mental fear because this is what we're hearing all the time. So when we go out to the grocery store because we have to get essential things and we're surrounded by people, it can be kind of scary, you know, mm-hmm. or, or sometimes here's the other way we act in fear. We take all the toilet paper and leave none for anyone right. else. Yeah. And, and, and that's a fear reaction. That's not a courage reaction. A courage reaction would be, no, no, God is with me. He'll provide my needs. I'll take what I need, kind of like the children of Israel with the manna. God said, go out and collect what you need for this day. And when they got too much, it kind of rotted. So he mm-hmm. said, collect what you need for this day. If we collect what we need and try to be more givers than takers during this time, that's choosing courage over fear. And so rather than letting this stuff play mind games with us, we can choose courage. Yeah. I was thinking this week about the, uh, the story of the, uh, the parable of the, of the, um, of the 12 virgins, you know, that some were, were prepared and others were not prepared. And I never really thought about the story as being something that was so, they, I never thought of the, from the side of those not prepared and like probably the panic that they yeah. were experiencing and, uh, and that, uh, that they were, de- they, they were depending upon other people to help them, uh, when they had every opportunity to be prepared. And, and yeah. I, I think that we, uh, that, we can kind of give into that sort of panic and, uh, and it can cause us to sort of forget the humanity of other people. Yeah. You know, and And, and that's where we're called to be a light in this dark time, because, Mm -hmm. you know, if if we claim the name of Jesus, then we should know that he is our provider. Yeah. We need, we should be prepared. We need to go to the grocery store and we need to get what we need, but we don't need to take what other people need. You know, we don't need to panic. Yes, yeah. we need to have that faith that God takes care of us so we could rest in that. Mm-hmm. And then that way we are a light in this dark time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And you had, you had said that you, you had thought about uh, the story of Joshua when you yeah, were thinking of yeah. courage. Yeah, um, in Joshua chapter one, I think it's, it's really incredible because uh, Moses had just died. And there's this dialogue between God and Joshua. So Joshua now has to lead the children of Israel, and uh, that's a huge responsibility. But I went through here and found three big times where God said, be strong and very courageous. If you look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, God says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. What I like about that first time God says, be strong and courageous, is he saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's reason number one, to be strong and courageous. Yeah. And because, you know, that's really interesting too, because he sees, he sees Moses as this, this, this pillar. But when you think about the story of Moses, Moses was very afraid uh, yeah, when, at least he certainly when he started, I mean, he didn't even want to speak. He had to have Aaron help him to speak before people. And, uh, and so uh, he, it's just interesting that, 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 uh, you know, the person that he, uh, he was looking up to was probably the most insecure of, of anybody. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Moses was like, when you read those initial chapters, that dude was filled with insecurity, which I think yeah. illustrates this point. Right. That no man should be our pillar. God should be our pillar during this time. And, mm-hmm. th- and that's what we see illustrated here. And that's what God is reminding Joshua of. I will never leave you or forsake you. As I was with Moses, so I'm going to be with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And what do you think we can do 
to sort of spiritually fortify us on a daily basis through this this experience well one actually that's interesting because my number two thing was be strong and courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant moses gave you keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate it on on it day and night so i look at that as god's word mm -hmm. like take god's word the bible take his promises and meditate on them day and night i think it's one thing like we should be informed so there is a degree we should watch the news but we all know the news social media take things a little step too far right and they they definitely go into that fear thing and so not only is corona a pandemic but i think the fear surrounding it is a pandemic so i think to answer your question what we need to do is get solid in god's promises for our lives and make our stand there and one of those first places is this i will never leave you nor forsake you mm -hmm. And then, you know, Psalm 91 is one of my favorite Psalms that's all about God's protection over us. And Psalm 23 is a beautiful Psalm about God's provision that he is our shepherd, so we lack nothing. Well, and one of the things I really admire about you is in your theological analysis that you do, uh, which everybody listening, watching should totally check out. I, I think that you are really great at finding the word of God in everything. Uh, and so that can be, that's a really good example to me. Like, yes, I, do, I think that reading the, scri the scriptures, the word, the Bible, I think that it's really important uh, and other, uh, other called upon people <laughs> and, and <laughs> to, to hear their words and to think about it. But I really like the fact that, that, that you can watch any, almost anything or read almost anything and find god's truth in in what you're what you're uh, watching and well, reading. thank you that's what i try to do because you know it's just it's part of just taking what god promises and taking his words and keeping it on our lips keeping it in front of our eyes and so yeah i think i think that's one thing that would really encourage our hearts yeah. if that's something that we keep in front of us and the last thing that i found where god says be strong and courageous uh, is verse nine God says, have not I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So, <laughs> and that third one, he went right back to, I will be with you. And it goes so perfectly with what you had with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, they were thrown in the fire, but who was with them? Yeah, yeah Daniel thrown in the lion's den, but who was with him? Mm -hmm. So here we are going through this pandemic but who is with us yeah and one of the things that i i truly believe i i think that god always answers the prayer of heavenly father do you love me do you value me am i am i a, a son or daughter of god i i believe he always answers that prayer and uh, and uh, so i i think that uh, that that's something that uh, if we're needing that spiritual uh, reinforcement uh, to pray that to just pray, ask a simple prayer of, do you, do you love me? Am I your daughter? Am I your son? You know, that uh, do I have value? I believe, I really believe that he always answers that, that prayer. Yes. And, and let me tell you, he loves to answer that one. <laughs> yeah. He loves to remind you how much, value you have to him and how much you he truly loves you i mean think about it if you look at romans 5 it is the most interesting verse because there's this verse in romans 5 that says yeah for someone good we humans might die for them for someone great we might dare to die but god demonstrates his love for this in this while we were still sinners christ died for us mm -hmm. So never doubt that value and know that if you pray that prayer, he is going to love to answer you. Yeah, I think so. And well, I think this has been really, really good. Uh, I, it's definitely made me, uh, given me a boost uh, in, in my spirits. And so I hope that has for you as well, if you're listening and watching. Uh, and I thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Uh, and I, I think that it's just, it's been a, a challenging time I, I, for me, as far as the two big blows were losing, losing my ch church and losing my theater, yeah. movie theater. Those are two 
it was really hard for me. I work at, I work at a movie theater, so it was pretty hard it for me. It was a double too. blow yeah. for you. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I because I thought going into it, I thought oh, I'll be fine. And I am for intensive yeah. purposes. I'm fine. But uh, but it's been a lot more sort of mentally and emotionally draining than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because I already but worked from home, cause... so I thought it was gonna be easy. But yeah missing my church and missing my my movie theater has been really hard well, when it when it gets in there and it, it it touches those two little things just the movie theater kind of your entertainment to go out yeah. and your church to go out and fellowship when it hits those two things that's really where it hits your mind and goes oh this is more serious than i thought yeah I think so. Well, let us know what your thoughts are and how you have been able to feel of God's uh, presence in your life through this uh, challenging time, uh, how you have been able to gain courage, what you think about uh, both of the sort of stories that we talked about, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Joshua. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section or on Twitter. Uh, we, can, we can share about it. That would be great. And if you know people that are in need of spiritual nourishment, maybe sh you know, share it. And, and, uh, and, uh, and let's continue the conversation in that way. I think it'd be great. So, uh, so Chris, where can people find you? You can find me on YouTube. My channel is called Durbania, D as in dog, U-R-B as in boy, A-N-I-A. -A. So if you search that, I am the only channel that pops up. Like Rachel said, I do these things called theological analyses where I, I do love to find God in movies and then talk about that with you. It's just a lot of fun. I even posted one today, taking the Hunchback of Notre Dame in season one of Castlevania, rated G and rated M-A. But there was such an astounding common thread that yeah. I couldn't help myself. So I like to do lots of fun videos like that. So come on over and check it out. I think that's great. So definitely check that out. I'll be all in the description section. And of course, you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews all over the place. And uh, I am gonna, I'm still trying to keep writing about films and, uh, and just uh, trying, to, uh, trying to keep uh, active and busy and and all that fun stuff so definitely check check all of my content out and please like i said please leave your comments on this and we would love that so much and uh and you can check out hallmarkies podcast we are continuing on just as normal really for uh for that uh and we're having a lot of fun uh fun doing at least one thing can be kind of normal through all of this is yes. the Salmerkis podcast. So check it out. <laughs> and, uh, and so thank you again so much for doing this and, uh, and we'll, you know, who, who knows how long this is going to be. So maybe we'll be able to do it again. So, yes. All right. Well, awesome. thank you very much. And we'll talk yes. to you later. Bye everyone.